March 19, 2012. Amateur astronomer Wayne Jaskey is photographing Mars from his home-built observatory when he makes an unsettling discovery. I was planning on taking pictures of Mars, and I was looking at the image of Mars on the screen, and something didn't appear to be quite right. I see a spot on the planet that wouldn't really focus. Wayne's first instinct is that it's a glitch in the system. I checked the telescope. I tried to realign the mirrors. I tried to refocus. Still, something didn't seem quite right. To rule out the possibility this thing is the product of a technical error, he sets the telescope to record high-definition images overnight. The next day after I process the data, I'm seeing a strange feature. I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking to myself, this can't be real. But I'm looking at it over and over again, and it is real. It's there. It rotates with the planet, and it's above the limb of the planet, but it shouldn't be there. If we can see this thing from hundreds of millions of miles away, uh, it had to be enormous. Wayne's pictures send the world of astronomy into meltdown. There are news organizations calling me. There's websites covering this. It's all over the world. And then the theories start to come out. One scientist suggests the strange apparition could be the product of an aurora, a light show produced by a planet's magnetic field. We can see auroral activity on the Earth. We can see it with our naked eye. It can be green or blue or red and it is caused by particles that are trapped from the solar wind coming and interacting with the Earth's magnetic field. Auroras have been seen in this area of Mars before, but there's a problem with this theory. No aurora on record has ever reached 150 miles above the surface of the red planet. So what we see now is not that, we see something else. Several of the astronomers looking into the mystery suggest this thing could be some kind of giant cloud perhaps made of Martian dust. On Mars, dust storms occur. Pretty large dust storms that can, once in a while, cover the whole planet. The dust on Mars is exceptionally fine, and even in the rarefied atmosphere, winds can whip it up into huge dust devils. Is the cloud an enormous Martian twister? Professional astronomers calculated that it was approximately 150 miles above the surface of Mars, maybe 600 miles long, we know it was, it was absolutely gigantic. The object is too high to be a Martian dust cloud. The atmosphere on Mars is so thin that the fine dust can't get very high. It's just not thick enough. The atmosphere is not thick enough to hold it up, so it falls right down again. What unknown force could throw Martian dust so high into the atmosphere? I think the only solution for this is that it had to have been an impact. That's a very effective way of setting stuff up very high. It's close to the asteroid belt, so you know the impact must occur. Experts predict one massive asteroid impact on Mars every three years. The impact theory seems to be the best explanation for Jaskey's anomaly until scientists analyze its chemical composition. So when you want to try to understand the composition of an object in space, what's commonly done is spectroscopy. You're going to measure the sunlight that's reflected off of that object. The results blow the dust cloud theory apart. This cloud was rich in water. Just like Earth, Mars has a weather system. This is a water cloud, and there are other water clouds on Mars. Uh, it seemed like this was case closed. But again, this vast anomaly is simply too high for the explanation to fit. Water doesn't get that high. There was a problem with this water cloud, and that was the altitude. At 150 miles of altitude, there is no way that this could be just your ordinary water cloud. We don't have clouds on Earth 150 miles above the surface of the planet. We have the International Space Station and satellites and the Hubble Space Telescope. If the water doesn't come from Mars, could it come from somewhere else? It might be a comet that exploded high up in the Martian atmosphere. That's something that we've actually observed in the atmosphere of Jupiter. 
The water cloud might be evidence of a similar event on Mars. Comets can break up. They are made mostly of water ice, and they will release wherever they break up. So in other words, it's not water vapor that came from below, it's water vapor that came from above. The theory seems to fit perfectly, except for one thing. There is no evidence for a large comet entering the Martian atmosphere at the time of the cloud's appearance. There's a lot of theories about what, what this could be. We have no idea whether it's some sort of natural phenomena or, or something else. We simply have no idea what it is. In 1984, cosmonauts Leonid Kizem and Oleg Atkov were on board the Salyut 7 space station when they reportedly saw something orange outside the spacecraft. In a panic, they both thought it was a fire and rushed to the window to see what was outside. And this is where the story gets a little weird. The cosmonauts report seeing what they describe as colossal winged humanoid entities hovering just outside the station. At first, this was dismissed as a hallucination caused maybe by overwork or by shortage of oxygen to the brain. Uh, but then when the replacement crew came on board, uh, the same thing happened. And on this occasion, all six of them saw these strange winged humanoid figures out there in the void of space. Back on Earth, the cosmonauts are subjected to rigorous psychological evaluation and are all given a clean bill of health. This is a multiply witnessed, multiple corroborated sighting of strange-looking figures outside the Salyut space station. So it can't just be an optical illusion. The winged creatures from the Salyut 7 sighting remain unexplained for more than 30 years. NASA does not believe that the so-called space angels in the footage are the same phenomenon witnessed by the cosmonauts. For some, a more plausible explanation for the wings is that they could be the solar panels of a satellite. There are about 1,300 satellites in orbit today, and they come in all shapes and sizes, from a laptop up to the size of a Greyhound bus. Pretty much all of them use solar energy, and the big ones tend to use the long solar wings, which extend from each side of the satellite. Intriguingly, solar panels can cause an orange glow similar to what the Salyut 7 cosmonauts described. I mean, the sun hitting the solar panels to just have this thing glow like you're in a campfire. And then the stark darkness of the blackness of space contrasted with these modules and the solar rays. It's just incredible to see that. 